Hi, yeah, and we're live. Um, don't just sit there and spam dab, please, won't you? Okay. Um, watching Lewis's feed there, then um, uh, it was a really positive message, okay? Um, you're tired, we know that, okay? But you're also ready for this, okay? You've been working two years on your A-levels. You are ready for these, okay? Um, I know you're tired. I'm feeling pretty tired at the minute. My baby is um, currently uh, teething, which <laughs> means that she's not sleeping very well. So we're pretty tired in this house, okay? But um, this exam period is over pretty soon now, okay? So you, or in the last little stretch, um, you can do this, okay? Just go in there, show your best. Try and be thoughtful, try and be considered, try and think of all that advice that you're going to get now that you've got over the last two years and how to tackle exam questions. Right, you can do this, okay? What a, um, what I've got for you is some pointers on the practical type of questions and on the synoptic, kind of covering the whole specification kind of questions as well. So that's going to be just in a minute there. In the links, I've got some kind of extra things for you as well because it's only going to be about half an hour this feed. Um, in the links, I've got um, all the practicals for Edexcel. Okay, so in the description, all the practicals for Edexcel. Now that applies to every exam board though because the um, apparatus and technique are the same across the exam boards. It's just the practicals are slightly different. And in that video, I talk about all of the kind of common evaluative points to make about those practicals. So they are the same for every example. So that's a really useful video. I've got my live stream from kind of Monday or Tuesday for paper free where I talk through um, the general and, and uh, principles of physics, okay, laws and principles of physics in A level. And that's a really useful vi video for just thinking about those things that are likely to come up on a unified physics paper or on a general and practical principles of physics paper, okay, the things that cover uh, all, all across the whole place. And I've also got the derivation stream, which is really useful, especially for synopticity, for the synoptic style questions. So that's down there in the links as well. And also the hardest questions, which tend to be, people are talking about the six markers I've noticed that already, it tends to be the type of question where quality of written communication is assessed. Um, those longer written questions where actually, as I said, you just pause and think and you plan with the question and you check with the question and you think through the things they've told you, the things they purposefully haven't told you, you can kind of make a good guess at what some of those markings are going to be. All right, we're going to jump into the visualizer just now, okay, and I'm going to go through um, what I've got for you today, okay, so let's do that. Okay, so um, these are the, the titles of the papers, and this will be probably the best for the LXL and the OCR and the AQA, because this video is all about the practical parts mainly, okay? But the data analysis and also the kind of synoptic elements come into this as well. Educast people, um, I'm not sure what the options are, I haven't got loads on that, but I do have, I did talk about light in one of my earlier live streams um, just recently, so you could look back for that as well. Okay, so um, this is actually all of the kind of laws and principles that I went through in the earlier this week live stream. So go ahead and check that out if you want to have a little list of all the kind of laws and principles that come up in A-level physics. So you can really think about what to be applying to those questions. So that's some of the main kind of sorry, oh yeah. <laughs> that's some of the main kind of advice is make sure that you know what your laws and your principles are. So you've got that kind of list in your head of the types of things to apply to those difficult um, those difficult contexts that they give you. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with uncertainties. Okay, so uncertainties come in kind of two things. They are not errors. Okay, they are not errors they're different things okay uncertainties and errors are different um, an uncertainty implies you haven't done anything wrong okay it's just you're not sure about what the answer should be okay so there's two ways of doing uncertainties there's what there's a way of predicting before you have results okay so if you don't have results you normally predict with half a scale division or a scale division in um, as your uncertainty okay, that's before you take any results so you look at the meter that you're using and you think well it's going to be plus or minus a scale division basically there's been a lot of chat about um, whether it's plus or minus half a scale division or plus or minus a scale division and actually all exam boards I think are going to accept either or just write it down write, make it really clear what your uncertainty is so delta x equals plus or minus 0.1 centimeters whatever you're going to do okay just make it really clear that that's the uncertainty you use and they will mark off that. Okay, you can also though do uncertainties from analysis and that's when you've got a bunch of um, repeated measurements, okay, and you can look at therefore the range and you can say well um, plus or minus half the range is going to be the uncertainty that we're going to use. 
So I hope that makes sense. That's um, that's if you've got the results, well, you can say what your uncertainty was. And actually comparing them, comparing your predicted and your analysed ones is one way to estimate the kind of success of your experiment. Okay, and comparing that to a percentage difference is a really good way of doing that as well. Also, there's lines of best and worst fit and comparing them. So you you'd find try and find the worst fit line that fits within the error bars and you can actually therefore do an uncertainty on a gradient. And that's, that's an analytical way of doing a gradient rather than a predicted way of doing a gradient. Now don't forget, when you compound uncertainty, so if you take an uncertainty in one measurement and you use it to, make, uh, to calculate something else, then you must add the percentage uncertainties. You cannot compound the absolute uncertainties. So if we were calculating speed, let's say, there's an uncertainty in um, a displacement, okay? Um, and you have to add the percentage uncertainty in the timing rather than just saying delta S plus delta T because they're different quantities, so you can't possibly compare them in that way. And that will give you the overall percentage uncertainty in V. So whatever your calculated value in V, um, it, that, that is as a percentage of that. Okay, so that, that is the way to think about using percentage uncertainties. And this is a really key thing. Always be thinking about analyzing and improving practicals in planning and evaluating practicals, always be thinking about ways to reduce percentage uncertainty. And there's two main ways to do that. If you want to reduce a percentage uncertainty, we can reduce the uncertainty, or you can increase the size of the actual thing you're measuring. So, for example, when we did the laser light practical, we actually went into the sports hall and we did it completely dark, um, but with a tape measure, okay, for the distance. So we were getting distances in like 20, 30 meters, rather than kind of two or three meters in the lab. And that meant that our final result had a very low uncertainty and therefore a very low percentage difference from the actual wavelength of laser light. Okay, now errors, well, they're not uncertainties because an error implies that something has gone wrong. Okay, now what could possibly go wrong? There's two kind of groups of them, random errors and systematic errors. Okay, now think of these differently. So if you've got one, you think, okay, this is about an error that the student has done something wrong in their practical, for example. How can we reduce that? Well, we can reduce a random error by doing repetition, discarding anomalies, and calculating a mean. Okay, there is other ways of doing that as well, but that's basically if a meter's fluctuating or there's a human error involved, okay, then there are ways in which we can re reduce random error. But you can't use that same process for reducing systematic error. Systematic error means every single reading is affected in the same way. It's increased or decreased or it's got a zero error on it or anything like that. Okay, so systematic error. And they can be eliminated by analytical means. So, um, or indeed experimental methods, okay, experimental procedure. So you can either use some way of putting the expected systematic error maybe as an intercept on the, um, you know, the C in Y equals MX plus C, so that your result is a gradient, and if, if you get a systematic error, it just shifts the graph up and down, rather than actually causing um, that, that gradient to change. So you can think about ways of doing, doing that. Um, also, so, so it could be making the error and set, or it could be just subtracting zero from all your results. Basically, you can analyze for them afterwards. You can recognize, oh, I've got a systematic error, so I can account for that in my ana analysis. Okay, and also you can mitigate for them in experimental procedures. So you can reduce a systematic error in the way in which you do things. So it might be friction, compensate for friction in the um, impulse practicals. It might be uh, insulating a beaker during a specific heat capacity practical, something like that. Okay. So you, then you'd be eliminating the heat loss to the room. Now, improving practicals tend to be some of the hardest questions. How are you going to improve the practicals? Now, it normally comes down to the, they will indicate to you in the question whether they're expecting you to improve the method or the results. So think of these two kind of categories. Before you answer, think very carefully about whether it's asking you to improve the method the student is taking or is it asking you to evaluate the results that they have got. Okay, so if it's asking you to improve the method, then you need to think through those apparatus and techniques that you've got from the core practicals. Okay, the exact same things in every exam board, those apparatus and techniques, and what they've said, how you've learned them is by doing the core practicals. Right? Um, if, you've, if you've got that list in your head, then you can apply one of those evaluative points, and it's all in my video for um, all of the Edexcel core practicals. All of the apparatus and techniques are in there. Okay, so you need to know them really, really well. 
and just kind of apply them. Just think, oh, they, they haven't done that. They haven't used a fiducial marker. Um, they, they haven't measured 10 swings and then divided by 10, right? So those, those things, all of those things. Um, and then the results, you look at the recording and all the processing of the results, right? So this is where they're asking you to analyze, well, the student hasn't put the correct number of significant figures. They've multiplied something that's two significant figures by something that's three, and they've quoted their answer to three significant figures. Well, that's not acceptable because you haven't measured both things to that level of precision. So really think hard about that one. Okay, think hard. Is it a method or is it a result? And make sure you answer that question in front of you. Um, one of my favorite ones of Lewis's videos is the RTFQ video, and you're just like, they didn't actually answer the question in front of them, right? Okay. And always, again, if you're improving practicals, think of ways to reduce the percentage uncertainty. Okay, I'll say this again because it is one of the most core things about experimental physics. We want to reduce our uncertainty so we get closer to true values. Okay, So a finer resolution, so if you can measure something with a micrometer rather than a meter ruler, we'll do that and it will give you a greater um, precision. Okay, Or you can also increase the value. If you can do the, the experiment twice the scale, then you, your your meet your meter, whatever instrument you're using to measure something, becomes more certain because its uncertainty, as a percentage of that, is, is lower. Okay. Now this one again, some of the other tr tricky ones, probably the highest skill level, is about designing a practical. And Lewis talked about this briefly as well. Okay, Here, here's my cut. So some kind of kind of method through. Um, designing a practical. Always be thinking about y equals mx plus c. Always be thinking about the graph you can plot. Okay, so can you, if they've given you some algebra, can you manipulate that into y equals mx plus c? So you can talk about how to plot, how to plot a straight line graph. Always be thinking and make it clear what your independent variable, your dependent variable, and your control variables are. Um, always be thinking about a way or several ways to improve your accuracy or your precision and again that's going to come down to those apparatus and techniques okay they, they, they're not going to expect you to know how to do things that, they, that haven't appeared anywhere in the syllabus okay so it's just going to be that list of all the different kind of techniques the ways in which we improve the experiments that we've taught you and then also again think about your percentage uncertainty so if you can say I don't know, I can use a more precise meter for, than, than that. And that often comes down to rereading and thinking, have you, once you've written your answer, rereading and thinking, oh, actually, if I say, if I, if I say drop from a higher height, or if I say measure a greater distance, and that, that, and then make that clear, that that will reduce my percentage uncertainty, that's a really good, good thing. Okay, um, and this is my other thing, and in the hard, uh, hardest um, questions in A-level physics, right, I talked a lot about this, and so I strongly suggest you go and have a look at the, that feed. Plan with the questions and check with the questions. All right. So before you put pen to paper in that paper free exam, every single written one, every single longer written one, you pause and you think, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this. Okay, I'm going to do this paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph. I'm going to do my algebra, rearrange it into y equals mx plus c. Then I'm going to make it really clear what my variables I'm measuring are. Then I'm going to talk about how I'm going to measure them and, and do, do that. And obviously you're thinking more specific than that. You're thinking, right, my IV is this, my DV is this. And then you write in that kind of logical way. Okay, it's going to save you time in the long run. So many times that people start questions and they're actually just, they've already used up half the page just repeating the question they've been asked to do. Well... The way in which he would reduce the uncertainty is this, blah, 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 right? And we don't need to hear that. We just want to see that, see this. There was a question about um, whether you can do it in bullet points. And no, if you see the asterisks, don't use bullet points. The rest of the time, you use your bullet points, okay? We just want to imagine the mark scheme. It's so useful as an examiner when somebody basically rewrites a mark scheme and it is in that, is in that form. We don't mind that at all. We're expecting a logically structured response if we see the asterisks. And normally the design and practicals will be the little asterisks one. Okay, and when we're looking for you linking points together. Okay, so link in your y equals mx plus c into your IV DVs and CVs. Link in how you're going to measure the IV with the accuracy. Okay, link in that accurate point, what you're measuring with to why it's going to be more accurate, that type of thing. All right. Okay, and then lastly, um, two things. Okay, it's, again, really hard ones. Practical analysis questions. Okay, so this is typically when they give you some results and maybe ask you to plot a graph. And they're testing your ability to use mathematical models like y equals mx plus c. And they're really going to be looking out for testing your ability to handle these two types of equation. So they're going to give you some unknown algebra. They're going to give you maybe a power law. Or they're going to give you an exponential rule. Okay. 
um, and you have to know what type of graph to plot for each. So I don't know if you see this is y equals k x x to the power z, right? So we don't necessarily tell you what z would be. It might do, okay. Um, but in this case, if you recognise this, okay, it's going to be like p equals k um, z to the power n. It could be any any algebra, okay. It might be an actual physical quantity they've talked about. You don't need to know anything about it. All you need to do is recognise, haha, power law, log log graph means you log both the columns of data, both the X and the Y column that you've been given. And then you hit the log, 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 um, hit the log, 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 hit the log, log, and then you go ahead and plot the straight line best fit, and your gradient is going to be whatever it's going to be from that. The exponential um, one where you just log the Y axis, so you just log the one column. Okay, and that will give you a straight line graph with a gradient of uh, a decay constant mu in this case. And this is the general form, um, whatever it is that. So if you see that the X variable is the exponent of a number, it doesn't have to be e, it could be p, or it could be anything. If you see that the x variable is up here in the indices, then you blooming well plot a log graph, and now you get a straight line from that. Okay. Now what I would say for this one, and for the designing one, and all the kind of paper-free ones, is look really closely at the mark schemes from the last few papers. You've still got time to do that. Dig out. Um, I think there are four for each exam board. Okay. There are Sam's specimens times two and last year's papers, right? And look through the mark schemes, okay, because there's in Edexcel there's a nine mark question which is pretty formulaic. It's basically here's some random algebra, plot us a graph, show that you can analyze it, show that you can determine what the number mu is or what the number z is from that graph. Okay? Um, and then plan out your way in the exam that you're going to do that. You're going to work methodically through those those mark schemes. Okay, you're going to you're going to be able to think if you know what the mark schemes look like in general. Okay, and they all look pretty pretty, pretty darn similar. Then you know you're going to um, you know you're just going to work through the same kind of pattern of thinking, and then it's not going to be very hard for you. And then lastly, the synoptic question. Okay, um, remember all those laws and everything that I've talked through and if you saw my live feed the other day then, then I hope that was really useful to you um, the laws and um, principles in physics okay get them in your mind get them ready to go you get think oh this is a little bit Faraday's law a little bit Coulomb's law okay I don't know if that would really really work in a question or a little bit circular motion a little bit particle physics okay and get them ready to go because they, um, there's some common ones that they, they kind of always use right and again look out for those in those past papers what parts of the syllabus have they jammed together and often if it's if it's about the algebra it could be about writing in the algebra this happens so this happens from this other principle or it could be deriving from two bits of algebra um, to get a new equation that's a really core cool skill and I've got the derivations feed in the description as well and then try to identify yeah, the principles and laws before you start writing and that was one of the key things that the exam examiners told us after last year's too many people were just jumping on and they were already writing something they weren't really thinking um, carefully about the principles that we're writing about okay and then if you do do that then you you can you can really respond and structure your answer around a law or a principle all right and then lastly plan the response again and check the response using all the clues in the question right so read through the question as you're doing, think, ah, oh, my response is going to start there. I'm going to use that bit of information. Then I'm going to do this little bit here, and then I'm going to do this, this little bit here. Now, when you look through um, my paper-free video, which is the top of the description there, playlist, all the paper-free questions, in the longer written ones, you'll see, before I write anything, I write a little paragraph plan. This, this, and this. And then when I'm writing it, it's the second time I've thought through the answer. And then when I'm checking it, it's the third time I've thought through the answer. And I'm able then to upgrade my language and think, yeah, there's a better way of saying that. There's a better word for that. Or I haven't mentioned um, that bit there, so I can put a little asterisk and put it in there. Okay, it doesn't need to be neat. It needs to be just well structured and well thought out, well considered and well thought out. We really just want to read your best efforts. You've not panicked over and just started writing. You, you're, you're thinking. So take your time. You've got that time in this exam. Take your time and show us the qualities that we know you've got. All right, that's all that I've kind of planned to say. I will have a brief look through the chat, but it is not going to be long. And then I've got a couple more things to say to you about um, guerrilla physics. And I won't wish you luck because you are ready. I haven't got any predictions, dudes. Um, yeah, yeah, don't. Um, right, but you need to make it, Malcolm. I like your thinking, okay, but you need to make that time, okay, to stop and think. Um, 
yeah, there's people chatting about likely six markers. It's a nice way to revise, to think about likely six, mark, six markers, because you cover a lot of um, topics that way. You definitely get away with abbreviations that are common. If you write some random abbreviation that you've made up, then yeah, definitely, that's fine. Yeah, if you, a lot of the, but I've seen this one um, a few times. Don't just say human error. Say that the, the human error is at reaction time, okay? And that is a random error. So random error is the one we really want. Um, Chuck Norris <laughs> has asked, um, where can you find the list of for experiment improvements? That's on my website. Okay, if you go in there, you'll see. If you go in the description, you will see um, my all the yeah every practical from Excel, um, and you'll also see my practical playlist as well. Yeah, so name the type. I've only said I'm, I've told you the two groups: a random and systematic. Okay, but beyond that, there's loads of different types of errors that you need to know about. Half Life Nerds here, big shout out. Looking forward to your reaction video to Paper Free. We all want to see Hitler reacts to unified physics. I wonder what he thought about unified physics. Um, biology. I, I'm quite interested to actually do A level biology. I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, student experience. Um, that's a good thing. All right, that's just about got back to the top of the feed. So, so nice chat. No dabs from me. It's been great to spend time with you. Okay, it's been tiring, and I've <laughs> and I've put quite a lot of effort into these. Okay, but I've really enjoyed it because I know that you people here are not just kind of last minute getting on it. Okay, you've actually planned it out. You ask good questions. You seem like you know what you're talking about. You know what to expect. Um, what what's he gonna do? I'm not a biologist, Mr. Denver. <laughs> it's linked up, the, the video for that. If you go into the description, dudes, you'll see, you know, that could be your evening revising. Okay, I'm not saying that mine are the only videos out there. Also, obviously, Lewis has got loads and loads and loads of them. And also, A-level, no, Science Shorts have got lo loads of great past papers for you to look through as well. That's, that's it for you. Uh, should I kick Mr. Denver for saying I'm a biologist? <laughs> what do you think? Block him from the channel. <laughs> he can't watch anymore. <laughs> okay, so... Um, go and have that one. So, here's my little plug then. <laughs> okay, um, results um, day. Okay, stay stubbed for that because I'll do a little live stream. I'll have a little chat. I really want to just know how you guys have done actually. Okay, so um, do just stay subbed at least until results day because I'd like to also give you a little bit of um, a little bit of advice for uni maybe. I'd like to hear if you got your places or if you didn't or what you got through clearing. Okay, I'd like to keep this kind of dialogue going with you guys. I'd like you to stick around. Maybe you're starting your own channels as well and maybe that um, you are interested in, you know, you know, being part of this kind of feed and sharing that experience with with younger people as well. So it'd be great if you would stick around. I've got a couple of specials coming up because I passed half a million views, which is nothing compared to A Level Physics Online, but it's still quite good. Okay, and I'm going to invite you to hunt the teacher, so more on that later, but you've got to stay subbed for that as well. Um, I'm going to open my own A Level Physics results, um, my own A Level results uh, live. And um, basically, I'm thinking, I really, I really love physics and I really enjoy that, but I'm thinking maybe my channel becomes a little bit more about kind of general education and tips and tricks for studying, you know, the, the experience of being a teacher or being a student, okay, as well, and kind of advice for young people in that kind of way. So hopefully that would still be useful to you in university. So, and um, I talked at the start about being tired at this point, but um, understanding where you, are, where, where you guys are, um, but it was different. It was different when I, when I did A levels. Okay, A levels were all modular. They weren't all exams at the end when I did A levels, right? So it was a little bit less stressful in that kind of way. I do remember it. I do remember being quite stressed and putting a lot of effort into it. But um, I'd like to kind of maybe experience it again, okay? And also, I don't have an A level in chemistry or an A level in biology. So this is one of my thoughts for next year. It might never happen. You, you don't know. But uh, one of my thoughts for next year might be that I actually study 
A level chemistry and maybe the year after study A level biology and do it, try and do it all in one year and try and do it just for YouTube, just using the resources made by YouTube teachers like myself, um, just by uh, do, doing it off my own back and see how that goes and see what advice and tips I can give to you all for that. All right, that's me, that's my wrap. So um, sub up, share this out with other people if you think they haven't seen it. Do go through all the things that I've linked up in the um, description and I'm going to say Good night. Get to bed nice and early. You got a YouTube session. Um, don't stress it. Okay, you're not going to learn something that you didn't get uh, before today, this evening. Okay, just get yourself ready. Get yourself in the zone. Think about how you're going to tackle those questions that are going to come up tomorrow. Right.